Welcome to another exciting Bible study with Rev. Dr. James A. Duncan, pastor of Shiloh Baptist Church. Faith study in the Word is designed to keep you fired up about your walk with the Lord. Fired up about our faith study in the Word with Pastor Duncan, author, teacher, and long-term educator with a burning desire to see every believer live a full life of faith in the redeeming power of God. This can only happen when we develop a hunger and thirst for studying the Word, God's Word. Thanks for joining us in tonight's study. Good evening and welcome to SBC Praise Ministers Bible Study. I'm Youth Pastor Sean Douglas. I'm Youth Pastor Bikima Douglas. And we want to thank Pastor Duncans for allowing us to be with you for the last four weeks teaching a Bible study. It's been awesome. Um, Praise the Lord. Just learning and studying in the Lord. And our title of our Bible study was The Four R's to a Victorious 2021. And as you know, we went through the series of the reset, the restart, the readjust. And our last topic is the refocus. Refocus. All right, so we, we're going to get started just as a review. Um, before we even get started, I'm going to have my wife pray real quick, and then we're going to get started. All right, let us look to the Lord. Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we want to thank you for today. We want to thank you for this time that we've set aside to learn of you, to study your word, for your word to transform us. We ask, Lord, that you just fill us up, overflow tonight. I pray, Lord, that you speak directly to our heart, our concerns, our needs, and the areas that we need to surrender to you. I thank you, Lord, for our time of study. Have your way in this place. Have your way in our hearts and lives. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. 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 Again, the four R's to a victorious 2021. And we went from the book of Nehemiah. We started in chapter one and we talked about the reset. The reset of what? God's plan for your life, the vision for your life. It's so important that you understand that if you're going to reset in 2021, you're gonna need Jesus Christ. He is the ultimate reset. So if you're just, you know, wanna know about God, wanna know about Christ, you, you, you're struggling, Jesus Christ is the reset for you. Even if you've been in church for many years, and you're stagnant and you're stale and you're stuck jesus is your reset and we want you to see that in the book of nehemiah in chapter one where nehemiah starts the reset of rebuilding the walls of of jerusalem then we had the restart the restart of what of the work we need to get to work for god i don't care where you are what you're doing you need to restart the work that god has put in you the vision that he's placed in your life it's so important that if you want to restart, Jesus can help you restart that work and have you excited and filled. And next we had the readjust. And what did we readjust? Our prayer life. And we learned that through Nehemiah. Um, through all through the book, through chapters one through four, we see in Nehemiah using a, a life of prayer, of communication with God to, in order to do what he needs to do. And it's so important that we are prayerful in every situation and everything that we do. Amen. And that leads us to tonight, the refocus. Nehemiah chapter 5, verse 1. And it reads, Now the men and their wives raised a great outcry against their fellow Jews. Amen. And what we see is, Nehemiah, in the first four chapters, we see that it is the opposition, it is the external pressure that is putting itself against God's plan, God's will, God's purpose for the people in Jerusalem. Now in chapter five, it's totally different. It is, it is internal pressure, the opposition from within. The people, um, God's people um, are having issues and Nehemiah has to stop the rebuilding of the wall to deal with these issues that are going on in the house. Part of our refocus is that we have to put our minds and our attention and our energy towards building our community. That means we need to find out what are the needs of the people. What places and things in our community need our attention. So the scripture we use to coincide with the lesson tonight is coming from Romans chapter 12 verses one and two. It's a familiar passage and it says, therefore I urge you brothers, and sisters, and view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. 
This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your what? Of your mind. It is so important that if you're going to refocus on God's people, you can't conform to the ideal and image of what the world says is important. You have to transform your mind to understand that God's will and God's purpose for your life is much bigger and better than what the world has to offer. And the first step is transforming your mindset. Amen. Here's another scripture in support of that. Philippians 2, verses 5 through 7. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Amen. And it's so important to understand that Jesus made himself a servant. Now, if Jesus made himself a servant, we should make ourselves and be available to be servants also. Servants to what? To the people, to the men and women of God that we have been placed you know, that we have been placed in charge of, but also that we have concern and care for. So it's so important that if Jesus humbled himself, God himself humbled himself, we should also be like Christ and humble ourselves as servants. And the fact that it has to be pointed out to us in scripture means that it's going to be a challenge. That means you're going to need the Holy Ghost to do this. You're going to have to take on the mind of Christ. Amen, amen. To put yourself in a position to be able to serve someone else. Nehemiah chapter five, verses two and three says this. Some were saying, we and our sons and daughters are numerous. And in order for us to eat and stay alive, we must get grain. Others were saying, we are mortgaging our fields, our vineyards, our homes to get grain during the famine. Um, before we get there, the first part of Nehemiah chapter five says that the people had a loud outcry. There were things going on. There was, it was disturbing. It was so much disturbing that they cried out and Nehemiah had to listen to the concerns of the people. Go ahead. We cannot expect people to come work if we don't address their needs and issues. It, in so many places, it's a trend in churches that we expect people to come in and we want them to be on this committee and be on this choir and come at this meeting and do this and do that. But it's really challenging to ask someone to do those kind of things if we haven't seen about their basic needs, what is really going on in their lives, what's going on in their homes. Amen. These issues have to be addressed in order to get to the bigger picture. We gotta deal with the internal individual issues. If we don't, it's going to become bigger and bigger and bigger and a stumbling block for all of us. Yeah. And, and the thing about Nehemiah is that we learned from the beginning, this man had integrity. He was trustworthy. He was honorable. He respected God. He reverenced God. And those were the qualities that helped him rebuild the wall. And the people respected him because in Nehemiah chapter two, when he comes and, and, you know, after the king gives him favor and it gives him the ability to get all the stuff, the wood and everything to help rebuild the walls. He goes to the people and he says, this is what God has done for me. But also this is what the king does, has done for me. And the people say, let us begin rebuilding the walls. They understand that Nehemiah is a leader that will listen. But also he is a, a he is a leader that, that that is concerned about them. He doesn't just talk about it. It's about being about it. Yeah. A lot of us can talk the talk, but we're in a place where we need to walk the walk. Your life should speak louder than your words. Amen. Amen. And the point we made, one of the points is effective leadership will get results and have and and, 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 and resolve issues. You know, there's something when you go to somebody, you ask them for advice, and you know, they give you some, you know, some blizzy blase advice about what you should do about your life, whatever, and it really is not effective. It's really not conflict resolution. It's really not solving the problem. But when you have an effective leadership, an effective leaders, they will get to the heart of the problem, but also they will use the word of God to resolve the issues and concerns that people have. 
Nehemiah chapter 5 and 5 says this. I'm going to let you read this, baby. Although we are of the same flesh and blood as our fellow Jews, this is the outcry. This is what the people were saying. Although we are of the same flesh and blood as our fellow Jews, and though our children are as good as theirs, yet we have to subject our sons and daughters to slavery. Some of our daughters have already been enslaved, but we are powerless because our fields and our vineyards belong to others. Wow, wow. And the point is, you're not powerless. You're powerful. And my wife, uh, 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says this, for the spirit of God does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and, and self-discipline. And the other version is, is, is um, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and, and a sound mind. mind. So understand that you're not powerless. Your voice is powerful. And when your words are powerful. Yes. So we have to be careful what we profess, what we say. It is important that you watch what you say because in your mouth is a power to have life, speak life, or even to speak death. Amen. Amen. And that's the next scripture we have down here. Uh, Proverbs 18 and 21. The tongue has the power of life and death. And those who love it will eat its fruit. It's so important that we speak life into situations. So many times we have friends, we have co-workers, we have associates that we, we hang around and that we see that don't speak life. They don't speak encouragement. They don't speak, you know, um, good things and so we need to surround ourselves with people that are speaking life into our life We're speaking hope to the hopeless giving joy to the joyless uh, it's so important as men and women of God that we understand that if we are going to refocus in 2021 and be victorious we got to speak life into situations we got to speak life into those things that are dead, that are that are that are that are dormant, that are that are dying, and speak life to them. And when there are problems, it's important that you stick to the facts. If you use your emotions, you get carried away and say a little bit of anything and everything. It is important when we're talking about dealing with problems with people. Yes, we acknowledge your feelings, but it's important that if we're going to get to solutions, we got to find out what the real yes. problem is. And guess what? We don't want to just be hearers of the word. We want to also be doers of the word. Amen. Amen. Nehemiah chapter, I mean, verse six. It has verse five on it, but this is verse six. And this is Nehemiah speaking. When I heard their outcry and these charges, I was very angry. I pondered them in my mind. And then I accused the nobles and officials. I told them, you are charging your own people interest. So I called together a large meeting to deal with them. These are some of the characteristics of a good leader when you refocus. Nehemiah does a great job of modeling to us how we are to handle conflict amongst people. Now, mind, if you're going to deal with people, it's natural. You're going to have issues. But there's a way to handle it even when you get upset. Amen. One of the things that Nehemiah showed us is self-control. Self-control. You don't have to lose it. You can want to lose it. But it's not necessary that you lose it. There's a way to say and think and do whatever needs to be done. So he used self-control. He thought before he acted. He used his discipline. And that he pulled that integrity and he pulled on the respect that he gained for being trustworthy. We have to be careful. When you show out, you put a lot on the line. Amen. You put your reputation on the line. You put your integrity on the line. You put your trustworthiness on the line. And most important, you put Jesus out there on the line. Amen. So when we get into crisis or issues or dealing with solutions to some of these problems, take a note from Nehemiah as to how we can go about dealing with problems when they arise when you're working with people. Amen. In the scripture, Ephesians 4 and 26 says this, In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. It's so, it, 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 it sounds simple, right? It, it sounds easy to do, but 
how many know that you know sometimes you you can get into an argument or you know get into confrontation and your anger takes over right it, it, it's natural it's human but we we are we we have to go beyond that that natural response of being angry, yelling, and screaming, and fighting, and cussing, and, and, and doing all the things the world said we should do when there's a confrontation. We take a page out of Nehemiah's book, if, if we just have some self-control, some focus, some, some discipline, some integrity, that, that we can speak, but it, it's okay if you're angry. It's okay you can be upset, but don't let the sun go down on your anger. Don't, don't let it rule in, in your life, don't let it run your life. Don't let that. Well, anger. It did. Yeah, because a, a lot of times when we're angry at somebody else, they don't know that we're angry at them, and they 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 go about their day minding their own business. But we sit here with the with the sour face and all turned up and talking about what such such said and such such said this. And next time I see him, I'm gonna do this. No. Give it to God. Let God handle it. It's so important that we understand. Proverbs 16 and 32 says this. Better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control than one who takes a city. It's so important that we use our patience, our self-control in every situation in life. Like you said, we have a testimony, and we don't want to lose that testimony with, 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 with somebody accusing us of, 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 of doing something that's, that's unseemly, that's ungodly, that's you know, that's that's not Christ-like. It's so important that we are examples of Christ in everything that we say and do. And in order for us to refocus in 2021, we gotta have what Nehemiah has, that, that discipline, that self-control when we're dealing with issues, dealing with the body. Amen. <laughs> uh, this just goes a little further into um, how we can handle conflict. Again, Nehemiah heard and he listened. It's one thing to hear something. Amen. It's another thing to listen because then you can move on with some understanding. He put his emotions in check. Sometimes if, if, if you feel, you feel your, your whatever the emotion is, you're ready to overwhelm you, you can just pause. Take, fall back if you need to. Take the time to meditate. Take Amen. the time to pray Amen. over it before you speak. So you don't have to live with regret. He went to the accused in love. Now, a lot of times, this is kind of sort of where we kind of muddle the fence or get it messed up. We think we're doing it in love, but we still come off wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be misinterpreted what you're trying to do. So again, pray about it. Meditate on it. Take the time it takes to get your mind, your heart, your spirit in the right place so you can really focus on the issues at hand. Then they talked it over. And for everything that happens in your life, every problem, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. There is a biblical solution as to how you can answer a problem that's current now. Amen. Amen. And Galatians 6, 1 and 2 says this. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Car carry each other's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Amen. Wow, <laughs> brothers and sisters, we, we we you know we we gotta understand that we we talked about last last week about leveling up. We gotta level up spiritually. We gotta level up our game in terms of how we're speaking, what we're speaking, because Nehemiah gives us the example of how to speak to brothers and sisters, deal with the issue. He deals with the issue. He brings them together to deal with the issues that are going on because it's rightfully so. These people have legitimate complaints. They have legitimate arguments about our own people are, are putting us in bondage. Our own people are enslaving us. Our own people are starving us. And Nehemiah says, hold on. I need to sit down and meet with everybody and bring this thing together because I can't, I'm concerned about people. I want to rebuild the wall. I want to rebuild God's wall, but I'm concerned about the people, and that's what God wants me to do. And so he takes the time to stop the building of the wall to address the needs of the people. And we, the church, must understand that 
if we're going to breach those people out there on the streets in our communities, we we just can't be thinking about building a church with, with glass ceilings and gold floors. No. We got to go to the hedges and highways and reach those and bring them in. If they need food, we need to give them food. If they need clothes, we need to clothe them. If they need jobs and education, we need to be providing the things that they need in order for them to survive. Nehemiah chapter 5, verses 15 and 16. But the earlier governors, those preceding me, this is Nehemiah talking about the other yes. before him and now. But the, but the earlier governors, those preceding me, placed a heavy burden on the people and took 40 shackles of silver from them in addition to food and wine. Their assistants also lorded it over, over the people. But out of reverence for God, I did not act like that. Instead, I devoted myself to the work on this wall. All my men were assembled there for the work. We did not acquire any land. Wow. Nehemiah sets the example and he says, listen, I, I could have I could have did like the former governors. I could have been corrupt. I could have taxed the people. I could have I, I could have did those same things, but I didn't do it because I know it wasn't right. And we have to have that same stance when we're dealing with people in our lives, in our communities, our friends, our families, our co-workers, our associates, that we have to do right by God and by men. And the thing you told me that, that I love, that my wife said, is that Nehemiah found favor with God and with men because of his integrity, because he was trustworthy, because he had self-discipline. All those things that God wants us to have all those attributes. Nehemiah displays them as he's rebuilding the wall. And the people trust him enough to come to him when there's an issue that is affecting their lives. And it's something where people, the community, can run to the church and get their needs met. And we should be able to do that. And I, I believe what was behind Nehemiah's motives, he always considered it could have been me. It should have been me. It would have been me. What if this was me? How would I want to be treated? I'm not better than them. They are my brothers and my sisters. And I believe that's something we as a people, as a church, we really need to pray on. You know, it's naturally, you know, for it always to be about me. But we're in a time, a place, and time where I need you and you need me. And we will do more together. Amen. 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 Nehemiah sets a personal standard, an example of conduct and service of how we should act in times when there's issues going on within the body with God's people. Nehemiah sets that example. If you're going to refocus for 2021 and you want to be victorious, it's important that we understand that it's not about us. It's about people. The scripture we referenced earlier about Jesus Christ humbled himself to the point where he was a servant, even to the point where he died on the cross for me and you. If Jesus was a servant and we are followers of Jesus, then we should be servants. And so let us look at this as we start 2021, as we reset, as we restart, as we readjust. And now we talk about refocusing Refocus our attitude. Amen. Let's have an attitude of gratitude, but also an attitude that says that we are here to serve, Amen. not to be serviced. We are here to lend a hand, Amen. not to get a hand out. Amen. We want to be the help that people need every day. Amen. We need to be that help. Amen. First Peter 5 and 2 and 3 says this. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And Nehemiah gives us that example. The people are crying out, there's something wrong here. 
We're being enslaved. We're, being, we're not, we're hungry, we're starving. We have to mortgage our fields. Our children are being enslaved. Our young girls are being enslaved. This, this is a problem. We, we need to feed our families. And Nehemiah says, hold on. Brother, nobles, officials, let's, let's have a talk. What you're doing here is not right. We, we, if you're concerned about the people and the rebuilding of God's kingdom, then you, you, you can't do this. And let me give you the example that in my life, I had a chance to do, you know, I, I could have did what the former governors and, 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 you know, officials did. But when I came, I gave you a better example. And as we look now in 2021, we have the best example in Jesus Christ. If we look to Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith, he is the best example for us to understand that we are to love one another. We are to love our brothers and sisters and care for them to the utmost. And I, I would just add that you don't have to t have a title to Amen. be responsible. For Amen. That. You don't have to, to go to this specific church and have this and no, 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 no. Jesus died for all. He desires that none of us, no, not one of us perish. So I would encourage you, why not you? A Amen. lot of times we expect them to do it. Amen. Them, because mind you, Nehemiah came into this. There were already leaders there. Amen. These problems were already there, but somebody, somebody has to stand up for what is expected of us, what the least that we owe, the least that we can do, and that would be being living sacrifices. That is your reasonable service Amen. to God, your actual true worship to God. So I would encourage you, it's you. It's you, right where you are, right where you are, amongst the people that you influence at your job, or when you're passing, or in your home, start where you are, it is you. Amen, amen, amen. It, it just blows my mind how the Holy Spirit works that as we talk and as we speak and as our study time together that Nehemiah challenges us and, and, and during our study time about be, being leaders in the church and how we shepherd the people that are under us and he gives us an example and, and, and it's telling that Nehemiah his, him, his integrity his trustworthiness his reverence to God, his focus and care on people was so important that he stopped the work to say, I have to deal with these issues. And in doing so, he finds a solution, a godly solution, and he does it in a godly way. And then he gives them an example that says, you know what? I, 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 it could have, you know, I, I could have did the wrong thing. I, I could have taxed you and, and, and did all those uh, those other things that the other governors did, but I didn't do that. I, I had you come sit at my table and eat food. When when they gave me provisions, I gave them out to the other people and, and, and they, who needed it. And it's so important that as we begin 2021, that we have an attitude of service to others because that's the only way that we're going to make it. That's the, the only way that we're going to survive. That's the only way the church is going to be the living church of God if we see and meet the needs of the people. The four R's to a victorious 20, 2021. The reset. Reset what? Your vision to God's vision about kingdom building. Letting Jesus be the Lord and Savior of your life. He can be, he is the ultimate reset. He can reset you right back. He can restore you. He can give you new life. That is the reset. And then the restart. Restart what? Your work. Put your hands to something. Get God's plan and, and begin to work it. And understand it's nothing but God's favor. It's nothing but his blessings. His divine favor that's going to get you through that time. His divine favor. Restart the work. And then readjust. Readjust what? Your prayer life. Your word. Your study time. Because Nehemiah had opposition from the outside. And every time he had opposition, he got on his knees and prayed. He talked to God. And then he responded. That means he was connected. 
In order for you to survive in 2021, you got to be connected. Connect to what? The Savior, the Deliverer, the Healer, the Waymaker, the one who can, who can change your whole life Amen. in one second, in one minute, right where you are, in your living room, in your dining room, sitting in your bed or sit, sitting at a table. It doesn't matter where you are. Jesus is available to you right now. And finally, Nehemiah, the refocus, what? Your attitude. Your attitude to God's people, your care and concern. Mm -hmm. For others. For others. Not yourself. To be a servant. Amen. To be a servant. Just as Jesus was a servant, he came to serve. Nehemiah rebuilt the walls. How did he do it? With integrity. Being trustworthy. Being prayerful. He reverenced God. And then it's concern and care for people. You can rebuild the walls in your life, but also in other people's lives. But you got to have this. You got to reset, restart, readjust, and refocus. Luke 4, 18 and 19, Jesus says this. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners, recover the sight for the blind, set the oppressed free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The four R's to a victorious 21. We can take Jesus' example. He says he was anointed to proclaim the good news. We can preach the good news that there is a savior, there is a deliverer, there is a way maker, there is a, there is someone who can help you in your deepest darkest times there is hope there is deliverance jesus came to proclaim that and then he says he sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners how many people are in bondage who are struggling with addiction and problems jesus is the answer he can deliver you that's why he came and he says recover the sight for the blind we know people who are walking here aimlessly, no direction, no vision, no purpose. Jesus can give you that purpose, that vision for your life. Just accept him right where you are. And then he can proclaim the, the year of the Lord's favor, God's favor, his blessing, his divine blessing. God wants to bless you. He wants to, he wants you to be so blessed so he wants you to the point where you understand that nothing in this world can separate you from his love Amen. nothing can separate you from his love nothing yeah. understand this victorious in 2021 the four R's we want to reset we want to restart we want to readjust and then we want to refocus but it's all on one thing, one person, Jesus. He is the answer. He is the way maker. If you get Jesus, the reset, the restart, the readjust and the refocus will be easy. So as we leave here tonight and we end our Bible study, we thank you for joining us for those four weeks. Hopefully you learned something. Um, hopefully you got something out of it. I know that we did in our study time and we just, just, just are thankful and grateful but just to be in this Amen. just to be in this position in this place. So um, I'm gonna have my wife again pray for us as we leave here tonight, and we say until we see you again. Let us look to the Lord. Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. Thank you so yes. very much, because yes. God, you are so good. I thank you, Lord, for your presence. I thank you, Lord, for how you've shared and you've ministered tonight. Yes. I pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that every word goes out, Lord, and it accomplishes what you set forth it to do. I pray for families tonight, husbands and wives and children, and those that are widowed, those that are lost, God. I pray in the name of Jesus that they find you. They find you and find out that you are sweeter than a honeycomb, that you are good, and you are the truth, you are the way, you are life. I thank you, Father, for your goodness and yes. your mercy. Yes. I pray in the name of Jesus that you bring all this stuff back to our remembrance, 
what we are going through, what we are in warfare. I pray, Lord, that you just give us an unction, Lord, that we know how to handle the situation. When problems arise, we can use the example of Nehemiah. We can use the example of you, Jesus Christ, allowing ourselves to be servants, allowing ourselves to pray, allowing ourselves to meditate on your word both day and both night, that you will get the glory out of the things yes. that we say and do. Thank and that as we lift you up, Jesus, you would draw all men yes. unto yes. you. Yes, Lord. We thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you for this time of prayer and praise and continue to work on us so that we can bring you all the glory as lights in this dark and cold and growing, waxy worse world. God, you are our life. So I thank you for that. Continue to bless and keep us. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. 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 Good night. Join us next week as we begin another exciting minister's Bible study with Shiloh's associate minister, Pastor Gary Maxine.